Good day everyone, DJ Darks here for another episode of Weekly Infinitus Releases. It's a little bit late in the week to be presenting these. I've been quite busy recently, but I figured we should put something out for all of those loyal viewers out there. So I'm joined once again with DJ Gokken. Hi Gokken. Yes. <laughs> and we'll be reviewing the three songs that were released, uh, what week was it? The week of the 17th. Now, once again, really weird picks, um, no congruent theme whatsoever, it once again just seems like Konami's throwing random things in, just spur of the moment, like, oh, I guess these will be good. But, you know, they, they've got the hat set up, they've got all the little pieces <laughs> of paper in there with songs written down, and they're just seeing what happens. Yeah, so, I mean, I do like two of the songs, one of them I'm not so happy about. Uh, we'll talk about it when we oh, get okay. into the video. It better not be a raisin letter. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first song for this week, really hard name, is Kokodo Koka Te Kodo Kaisan by how, Dr. Honda. How long were you in Japan again? A long time. No, but that's how you pronounce it, because it's a long sound. U, Ko uh, so, you, so you have to draw it out. You have to draw it out. Oh, okay. So yeah, you don't just go like Kokodo, otherwise it sounds weird. Well, anyway, the really long freaking Dr. Honda named 9 from DJ Troopers. Um, I actually quite like this chart. It reminds me a lot of Midnight from Empress. Well, both songs are from Dr. Honda. Yeah, I know. So it's pretty much just like a stock standard Dr. Honda set, uh, song and chart. Um, wasn't this originally a theme from Metal Gear Solid? Oh, God, I believe it was probably derived off it or something. From MGS3, I think it was. Um, which I think our friend DJ Joey got like really obsessed with. Because like, oh my God, it's an MGS song. I don't, I don't know. It's by the guy who did music for it, though. <laughs> That's true. Either way, I mean, the, the chart's really straightforward. Yeah. There's nothing really spectacular about it. It's just one of those nines, which is like, okay, this is like nine to a T. Very straightforward patterns. The occasional roll, the occasional scratches with a roll. But it's honestly, you know how you play some of those elevens and tens, and they've got uh, streams with odd scratches. Yeah, the song's full of them. And having played them, and you'll unfortunately see me play it soon. Um, <laughs> you'll you'll see that if this is your weak point, play it. It's yeah, good practice. I mean, yeah, it's really good for learning that, like, you know, you've got a drum roll and then you've got to do odd scratches through it. It's, it's all about bringing your thumb over. Yeah, which it's, is good. It's the bane of every player's existence. But, I mean, it's not tricky enough where that will ruin your score or make you not clear it, I find. I mean, it has got that one section at the end. For me, it is. Yeah, well, I mean, like, that one section at the end could trip you up a little bit, but, I mean, I don't think it's going to kill your laugh bar enough to make you fail it. Depends, it depends whether you're quite um, confident with your ability to handle nines or whether you're just breaking into it that's true that's true um yeah i don't know like i think it's a relatively safe pick it's not too tough i, I think it's a nice nine for people to pick sort of mid-session it was always a bit of a forgettable song and chart for me but that's possibly because i was quite bad at it having replayed it <laughs> sort of made me go okay this is a this is a pretty good nine but i'm not you know i'm not frothing in the mouth to go play it <laughs> and that's the thing that i pointed out last episode with matt about infinitus like it does highlight those charts where you sort of go back and go oh yeah that is actually pretty fun i might go back and play that whether that's intentional or not is another story i, I don't think it is but yeah <laughs> um, on that note i guess we'll jump into the play video so here's gokun playing i'm not going to pronounce it again well, the so dr honda song from troopers well fun fact it translates to high altitude low opening or halo which is a parachuting technique thanks remy wiki If you need like minor adjustments, let me know. Try to eighty. Okay. We'll hit the fuck, what is it? Fuck, I don't know what it is. <laughs> wow, <laughs> thanks, Konami. Ah, uh, hold, hang on. Oh. That one. Do. And then raise white number two to about two fifty, please. Two fifty? Yeah. Cheesy bud. Bad luck.
Okay, so the second song for this week is Captivate Sabaki Sublime Techno Remix by... I don't know who it's originally by. Is it by Yoshitaka? Yeah. Yeah, Yoshitaka remixed by DJ Yoshitaka for serious. Uh, once again, don't know why this wasn't in the default song list because it is basically a serious CS port. But I guess it's good that they're adding the list slowly bit by bit. Um, I really liked the original Sabaki. I mean, because I think it's because it came out in Drum Mania, like, fresh, new, a timeout. I didn't, and I'll tell you why. Why? That ending is bullshit. Oh, uh, as the, the Drum Mania yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. the Drum Mania one was dumb. <laughs> but um, the song itself I really, really liked. Um, because, you know, it was fresh. It was like, we didn't have Captivate 2, we didn't have a million Captivates at that time. Mm. So it was like a fresh Captivate at the time, which was like, oh my god, I love Captivate and Happy Sky, now there's a new one in Drum Mania, and then it was like, holy shit, it's in 2DX. So, I mean, that's the reason why I quite like it. I don't know about you, like, what do you think about it? I like the chart, the song's okay. Um, I prefer, I prefer the, the, the remix, um, as opposed to the 9 we found in, what was it, Gold? Yeah, it was in Gold. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it's basically just back in with a, ca- with a contract twist in it. Ah, but see, that's the reason why I don't like the remix over the original, because, you know my because it's got Yoshitaka's scratches through it. Uh, the, the, like, the, the normal <laughs> chart, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that scratching pattern yeah, yeah. fucks me over every single time. But, you know, in the in the normal one, it didn't have that pattern, so, you know, it's just a straightforward 9, whereas this, it's like, well, now you got to scratch with those patterns. I could have sworn the 9 had them as well. No, it didn't. Really? It didn't. Yeah, the 9's really straightforward. It shows how, well I've, it shows how often I've played it. <laughs> that being said, I mean, it is a pretty straightforward 10 as well. Like, it's very on beat until the very end, until you got, like, the triplets. It's a pretty fun 10. It is. It's fun. And I remember playing this, like, back when we got serious and going, God damn, this is a fun chart. It's just, yeah, as I said, I'm not a fan of the scratches, because it, it really does kill your score. And you'll see in Gokken's play, like, his ratio is really good until the turntable really digs him over. Good old, good old Konami support for whatever. Well, it's not Konami support, it's it's the Arsene developer, which, by the way, people need to get on the back of Zip, and I know that, like, I'm gonna get crucified for saying this, but there apparently could be a fix for it. Um, you'll have to keep update, or I'll try and keep you updated about that if it does come out. On what basis do you say that, though? Because someone actually wrote that it is fixable, he does know how to fix it, he just hasn't had the time to do it. He's probably busy. Yeah, he's probably busy. Dude, dude's but... probably got, like, a wife, kids, a dog, a side chick. Um, hey, prob- come on, let's, pro- let's not make assumptions here. He's probably, like, busy, <laughs> like, four in the morning, we'll, we'll stick. Smoke, smoking this huge thing of pork belly to make, like, his homemade bacon. That would be amazing. That would be pretty amazing. But we'll, we'll ma- stay ma- on the... Ma- we'll ma- stay... Straight from Canada. We'll stay on track with and while he's doing it, No, 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 no. He's We're playing gonna... acid pumper at the same time. Oh, God, here we go again. We're going to stick to talking about 2DX. So, once again, just really straightforward 10. Um, yeah, it's fun. Check it out, play it. Um, here's a play video of Gokun kind of stuffing up the scratches because of my turntable, but alas, here we go. Sorry Zip, I love you.
Okay, so the final song for this week is Eraser Mode of Phantom by LEDG vs Groovy, which was released first in Red CS, I think it was, yeah, Red CS, and then released in AC and Sirius. Um, interesting that, once again, they've gone for three Sirius picks and songs that potentially should have been in the game by release. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's another 12 to the list, so I can't complain too much. Now, as for the song itself, people are going to hate me for this, but I am not a fan of Razor Motor Phantom. Alternatively, Gokun, you said that you actually quite like this song. I like it, but then again, I like a lot of Gabbo. Yeah, see, I'm not a huge Gabba fan, and that's the thing, like, it, it's just noise to me, it's just blah 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 blah. But, but, but that's the problem, when, when you give something like this a genre, you get all these dorks who come out the woodwork and go, Oh, uh, it's actually terracore, oh, uh, it's actually, like, high-speed jet, it's, it's silly. The, the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, that sort of style of kick and that sort of speed of hardcore techno, if you will, Yeah, I'm quite fond of it. And having come into 2DX back when I first heard this, I was into that sort of music more so than I am these days. Yeah. So this song really sort of, you know, right time, right place. It's true. I that, mean, that said, the chart is, um... Oh my god, the chart. Is, so... It's okay. <laughs> when this first got released on our Solid State Squad, it was really funny, because if you found a score with under 100 bads on this, it was a quite an outstanding score. This song is incredibly easy to bad glitch. Yeah. Like, insanely easy. And so, some might say the rave it, rave it of its time. Oh, probably. I mean, Ra no, Raven Raven's its own beast, but I mean, this was just, oh, such a mess. The other thing is the slowdown. I mean, back then you didn't have a really comfortable way to deal with it. Nowadays, you've just got the two key tap down trick, which is easy to do. Which, oh, right, because yeah, because that, you couldn't change it mid-song? No, no, you could. You could, but I mean, it wasn't as comfortable as uh, floating. Like, you couldn't get it... Per I mean, it is a perfect division. I doubt, I doubt any... I doubt many people really had issues before floating. I mean, personally, yeah. some of my best scores and songs that had speed changes were before floating. Oh, that's surprising. And I mean, it is perfectly divisible, so you could just cancel down two notes. But I mean, I yeah. find with floating, it's a lot more comfortable. Well, I, my argument was that you had to understand it a little bit more, what numbers yeah. worked for you, that's what true. was coming up. The thing, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a messy chart, and it's like, as I said, I'm not a real fan of hardcore, so... Well, well it's a messy song, so it does a good job of portraying that. Yeah, no, that's true. It, it's, I reckon it's a good solid mid-12. Solid mid-12, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Although, it, these days, with what's considered a mid-12, I'm starting to put it into the lower mid-12. <laughs> it's really sad, because when this came out, it was actually one of the harder 12s. People were like, holy shit, if you can triple A that, then you're really good. Nowadays, it's like, well, if you can't hit 135 as 8s, then you suck at the game. It's so disappointing that, you know, it's just shifted, because, you know, when I got the triple A, I was like, yes, this is, not like, a really good, solid score. People were like, oh, it's just a razor motor, man. Like, it's not that, everyone not just, that impressive. Everyone just got better. Look at, look at, shooting, um, look at shooting games and, like, ITG and all that stuff as well. Yeah. What, what was considered almost impossible a decade ago, or two decades ago, mm. is these days, it's kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think a Razor Motor falls very much victim of that. Uh, a lot of things in 2DX do. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, so now that we've covered that in almost all its entirety, here's a... Oh my god, I can't talk. Here's a play video of me, DJ Darks, flailing through a Razor Motor Phantom another.
Okay, so that wraps up another episode of Weekly Infinitus Releases. Once again, not too excited about the songs. Um, you know, they're, they're nice, but they really should have been included in the original releases. They are all serious default songs. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Were there many other serious songs that were missing? Yeah, there's still heaps. We've got, like, Golden Cross, we've got Exusia, we've got Vulse. I, th I think in that case it's wrong to consider it that they should have had them anyway, because it's basically serious ears. Yeah. I, I don't think Konami consider it as such. No, I mean, it's clearly its own thing. I know they're treating it as its own thing, but I mean, if they're selling it per se, sort of like a serious re-release. But the, aren't they? Are, are they? No, and that's the problem. Like they're like, oh, it's kind of serious, but not really. When did they say that though? Well, when it got released, I mean, it, it was basically saying, you know, modelled off serious CS. But, but, but did Konami at any point come out and say that this is basically serious? Well, I don't think because so. I feel like this is more just a error in the community's perspective of how it should be like expectations of it oh i guess that's true i mean, I mean it's under like it's understandable that in one case you've got a, a you know finally a new cs release mm. that is based on serious yeah it's based on serious mind you it's it's like looking at uh the u.s release yeah and saying well that was basically ninth so that should have everything that was in ninth or that's true whatever it was supposed no, to you have. make a very valid point there i, I think I think it's safe to assume that some of the songs they're finally adding probably should have been there in the first place. But at least they're here now. And that's something that someone was saying on Facebook, you know, like, we could, you know, bitch and moan all day long, but they are actually adding stuff in. And I feel like now that we're nearing, like, over 70 songs, it's really good as an independent release, because you've got enough content in there to actually, like, flesh it out and play it independently and enjoy it. The only thing that does concern me, though, is that eventually we're going to reach a point where at least people will be sitting there going, why won't they add this, or why won't they add that? Yeah. We don't necessarily know what the story is behind Konami and licensing fees in certain songs. That's true. And how unwilling they are to pay for them. I mean, clearly they're always removing things, and whether it's because oh, but they, of that. They still have the license for, say, I don't know, look at London Affairs. Like, they've always had the license for that. It's but they just, just removed it from AC. They just removed it because it wasn't a popular song. Really? Yeah. So, what they do... Wait, was that serious? It wasn't popular? Yeah, apparently it wasn't popular. <laughs> Come on, Japan. Come on. <laughs> well, with that being said, the other thing I'm not really happy about is that, you know, they've added in that Ryu event and sort of skimped on content for a few weeks just so, because... So you pay for a ticket to play the course once. Yep. What if you fail it? Well, then you fail it. That's it. You're out. <laughs> What's the ticket? <laughs> so don't fail. <laughs> but that's, that's stupid. I wanted to bring up an interesting point because obviously Japan's their target market, not the not foreign countries. But with the ticketing system, I mean, that's a hundred yen, which you're putting into a game you're playing at home to play a course. If you're in Japan, why the hell wouldn't you go down the road and spend that hundred yen playing at an arcade? Because or buying a can of your favorite soft drink. Well, now that's like 150 yen, so alas, you cannot do that anymore. Oh, serious? There's yeah, bound to be a place out there that sells wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is, especially yeah. if you're like out in the middle of nowhere. But I mean, the point I'm trying to make is they're really not marketing this still to be appealing for their target audience. For people outside of Japan, fantastic. You know, they're adding in features like the score graph, which doesn't work, but <laughs> at least, at least, you know, they're adding those things. At least, you know, we're seeing some progression with the game in its current state, so. You know that episode of The Simpsons where Mr. Smithers is like, you know, it's the kids, not me, sort of. Yeah. That's how I envision Konami sometimes. Yeah, they're just, that's true. They, they've reached that point where they're no longer, they 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 no longer quite know what their main audience really wants, even yeah. though it's right there, it's right in front <laughs> of them. But they just sort of won't accept it well, for, for whatever true. reason. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure too. Or or, or perhaps I'm just so far from being right. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least they are continuing with Infinitus, and it hasn't been unsuccessful, per se. I mean, you know, you've got 3,000 active subscribers, so... Yeah. And looking at Copula, it's just in terms of what could be in the future, yeah. they've got some great songs in there, like Acid Pumper. Yeah, no, and, they, yeah. and I, think, I feel like we're going to see that over time, which is good. Yeah, I really so look forward to them adding that. <laughs> Eventually. With that being said, we're going to draw this episode to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, sorry, I've been quite busy recently, so I haven't put these out on the weekly basis that I thought I would. Yeah. But we'll try and catch up. We'll try and release that content steadily. And yeah, anything you want to add before we get carried out? Um, not really. I mean, there was this one time I went to Geelong and I got these fish and chips. And it was not bad, but the thing is, is that this is a fish and chip shop on a pier, right? <laughs> and naturally, you would think, it's on a pier, there's fish all over the goddamn place, it's the ocean, come on.